If you want to know how to draw these super stylized owls at home, stick around to the end of the video because I'll be taking you step by step on how to do just that. Now let's go. Hello everybody, I hope that you've been doing well. Um, in today's video we have a very special treat for you where I'll be going through the process of how to draw owls. And I just want to say that we've made it guys, it's our first ever sponsored video. And that sponsor is MentorMe.Art. And unlike other platforms, MentorMe.Art hosts some of the best artists in the field. Some of them have created concept art for Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and who are behind the scenes of some of the best comics and animation studios in the entire world. And honestly, there's just so many great artists all in one place. But me personally, I am completely in love with Giovanni's work and the way he just uses bright colors to capture your eyes and gives you the aesthetic of like the 1990s skateboard feel, I, I'm definitely be taking a few tips from him. Mentorme.art is an absolutely incredible website where you can develop your artistic skills further. Also, by having your own personal mentor, it takes out all the guesswork on what to practice, how long to practice it for, and when you're ready to move on and what you're doing right or wrong. Also, make sure to go check out the mentorme.art Instagram where they share some amazing tips, resources and support to help people along their art journey. Because as we all know, art can be hard at times. So if you're ready to explore a creative world and improve on your art, there will be a link in the description. And seeing as the mentorme.art logo is an owl, which is a symbol of learning and mentoring, we are going to be learning how to draw some owls today. So owls are actually a super cool thing to draw and there's so much you can do with it because of the combination of shapes. If you actually look at the head of an owl, it's quite like a triangular shape but you can morph into like a rectangle. And with the body posture and like sort of the broadness of an owl, I mean, there's so much you can actually do to create something that looks just so pleasing to the eye. At the start of the day, I'm gonna show you one way to do it and this is how I'm breaking it down. So the first shape I'm gonna start off with Instead of a circle, which is the shape I normally would use, I'm actually going to use more of this diamond shape. Just like this. So, once you've established this rough diamond shape, already if you've got that artistic eye, you can probably see where it's going or where I'm taking it. And from this point onwards, I'm literally just going to do a cross hatch line straight through the middle to divide the head in two sections. So as you see, this is gonna be the left side of the face. So left eye will be placed here and the right eye will be on this side. Just to, pit, uh, just to line it up, draw yourself a center line. And straight away what I'm gonna do is not worry about the sort of eyes I'm gonna pin in place, but just draw two circles. So the left one, I'm lining it up so it's in the middle of that quadrant here and that's going straight across. And already when you put the guideline in, you might see, oh wait, that, that quarter sort of looks like the eye's half shut. That is exactly what you want to do with the sketch lines, because if you want to have your character that way, you can have it like that. And on this side, you want to do the exact same thing. So, pit a circle. And just because it's your foundation's line does not mean you have, to, you have to stick with this. Actually, the looser you are at the beginning, the more options you have later on to pit things in place. So for this, I'm actually gonna do what I said and use the guideline to put the eyebrow in. The eyelashes in, sorry, so like that. And then with this one, I'm gonna do the exact same. And now using the bottom half of the circle as the eye. But for this, I'm actually gonna do like sleepy. Obviously they're nocturnal animals. So I'm gonna sort of play, out, play up on the fact that they're nocturnal animals. And you want to give the illusion by just putting on the lips here that the eye is sat in the in almost like a socket. So it's wrapping around and then I'm going to do some bags under the eye just to give it that real graffiti street style which is obviously the, the style I specialise in. And using them with the top of the circle, I'll go really in depth with everything I'm doing. The top of the circle, I'm exaggerating for the eyelid. So by exaggerating, I'm just using this round shape but pulling up and then I'm following this line around just like this. And just so I can keep the process with you, obviously you don't need to rub yours out now, I just want to make sure you guys can see what you're left with. You will get an eye that looks something like this here. Just put in a few final lines and touch it in just like so. And with the other eye, I'm gonna do almost the exact same process. 
So exaggerate this shape. So I'm exaggerating. So it's coming up, flying off there, and the same thing here, coming back towards the eye, like so. And I really like it to give it a sleepy look. So the eye's really half shut again on this side. And just bring this bag underneath. So obviously this guy's gonna wake up, he's gonna get his cup of joe, feel refreshed and enjoy his day. A lot of things, a lot of drawings, you see similarities between human form that you bring to the animal world. So obviously the nose would be in this sort of place, but obviously as an owl, it doesn't have a nose. So we're gonna draw a beak. And to do that, look where the crosshatch line is here. I'm placing a rectangle in this part. Just a rough rectangle right now. I'm not actually making any expression. Putting this rectangle shape in. And then you kind of want to do a smaller rectangle inside of that rectangle to give it a three dimensional look. So that'll be the front of the beak. And then I'm going to bring the mouth right down. And just put a downward arrow for the front of the beak here. Like so. Another fun little tip you want to do to make it have way more dimension is don't block the shape off here and just bring it down the same so it lines up like this. And like so. And using that second square, you can lightly shade just to give an indication that it's three dimensional, it's got a three dimensional shape. And obviously that's the top part of the beak for the bottom. I'm just gonna sort of do it where it's just a little bit open for this one. And to do that, I'm just completing that rectangle shape. Just like this. And obviously inside the mouth is gonna be a darker, so a bit, a bit of a dark tone in there for now. And then underneath, closing the mouth. Just like that. And it's slowly coming together. From the top, where the beak sits, it's gonna be pushing it into the fur. So I'm just gonna do a few lines on top of it. To give it some sort of like folds, like it's all crumpled up, it's got a lot of fur. And from here, I'm gonna now place the eyebrows. And this is where you can really do a lot of fun with an owl because it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of eyebrow shapes, some that come straight off and really long off the picture. For this one, I'm just going to give it a, two eyebrows like a normal human. And then from here, I'm going to have these long shapes, these long tick shapes coming off the head. And just exactly the same on the other side. Just like that. And now I'm gonna, a lot of owls have little markings on the face and I'm gonna copy the diamond shape, but a bit closer to the eye, so it's in between. And what I'm doing is just roughly lining some ticks, but really be loose because each owl's not gonna have a perfect shape here of ticks. You're just gonna rough it in. And now starting with the right side of the face to start to shape the face round, I'm just gonna do a line following that shape and slowly coming out towards this eyebrow. And then I'm gonna follow the diamond shape we initially put in here and bring it back out just like so and throw it back in. So it still has the initial diamond shape we first established. And likewise on the other side, we're gonna to stick to the diamond shape and we're gonna throw it out and throw it back in. And already you can start seeing the character come alive. Just like so. So that's the basic principles of how you will draw an owl's head. Now you can start adding a few little more details in like around the bags shape the mouth 
a little bit more, so I'm gonna bring it out tight, just a tiny bit. And paint a few extra lines just to indicate his mouth shape there. And there you have it, guys. That is the basics of how you draw an owl head. Just throw the wings up. Here I'm just going to put in a few extra tusk little bits of hair, just off the head. And under the mouth, just a bit of fur. So just this little C shape and then a few wisps by just whipping the pencil. Now you've got everything in place, you want to do the body. And with the body, you just sort of want to do the same shape as the diary that you do head, but instead of being more squished, you want more bigger. So here is a more stretched diamond. So there's his chest. And there's his back. So instead of having a squished diamond, make it a longer diamond. And then we're putting the foundations in. So here I really like the front of his chest. So I'm gonna exaggerate that and just curve the front and come down. And here, I'm bringing down, pulling it up here. You left with that sort of shape where his back is. Now you've got to think about both the wings and positions, and this is where it gets really fun because there's so many different positions you could do with an owl. Um, but for this, I start with the top of the wing, so it's like the skeleton, and just do what you want to keep it with two simple lines. No matter how you do it, you might want to do it like this, have his arm down there, you might want to do it like this, have his arm up here. Uh, for this one, I think I'm going to do it like this. And once you put your tick in place, you've got a great option to decide where to go from here. Um, definitely do the top part first. So here, just fill it up with a tube. And then it's going to come back here, like so. And now once you've got this tube in place, you're going to be looking to put the feathers in. And for that, we're just going to do two separate parts. This is part one and this is part two. So for part one, just pull out a curved line and look to bring it back to this point here, at the very back. But slowly, you want to start from here, this line, you want to get to this line. Just like so. Boom. And then you've connected. Let me just rub off some of these lines from the body so you can see a bit clearer on the camera. And then you'll be left with this kind of shape with not a lot of detail inside at all. From here on the back, you want to do the same lines you did from the neck. So just a few lines and make a little indication of where the first line of feathers are going. So like that. And you want to do the same with the second line. It's a slight indication, but it starts off bigger here and gets slowly off here. And for the last line, we're looking to fill up the space, but with this, you want to just do in these tick sort of shapes like that. One, and these are obviously the bottom of the feathers. Two. Three. And then just keep your weight, making your way back. Till you finally follow the guide, and as you're getting further back, you want to make sure they're getting smaller and smaller as they go into the distance. And for this, you can start where you have the lines at the visor, you can start putting some texture in. Because a lot of owls have a pattern on their actual uh, feathers. Just like this. And here, just really, there, these are just some real loose shapes. And just keep going with these little. I'm just doing the squares for now. But you can change it up no matter how you you can change it up however you want to change it up because um, no every owl has different patterns. So this is where you can get really fun and creative. And yeah, just do your own thing on it. Once the first wing is in place, I then like to do the second. And here I want to keep that same shape on this side. So obviously you're only going to see a little bit of the back one, and then it's going to be ticked out forward. 
So you have this kind of shape, like a triangle. And with the one, two, three of dividing the, dividing the feathers, you want to do the exact same. So you've got line one, line two, and line three, as you guys know, it's just a straight tick. So one, two, three, and then four, five, six. And you know what to do again with the lines. I'm just gonna do the random squares again for the effect of the feathers. And the same goes again. And if you want to be really uh, delicate with this, you might see a few leaves coming from the backdrop there. Here I'm just exaggerating this a bit further to bring it out. Now as for the tail, here I think I'm just going to have it coming straight down. So you just want to pull a line down and just start putting the feathers in, which is the same shape as this. Like that. And depending on how you're having them, you can just draw some legs in here. Well, legs, I mean claws. So here's one. Start off with a small square shape. Square or a rectangle, completely up to you once again. And to do it, you want to do like fingers, so small rectangles. So small rectangle one, small rectangle number two. And then underneath, you're going to have this small one connecting to the bottom of the square. And then you will create something like this with the claws. And then from there, you want to connect it to the body. And here we're going to do actually, let's do some a, a twig coming up. So here's a bit of background. Put some leaves in place. Just like so. Really rough for now. No detail, don't concentrate on the detail. Putting in the rough shapes and building up as we go. And once you get to a place you, you're happy with it and you think, hey, this looks kind of cool. Next, you want to grab yourself your black pencil, a black pencil, and darken up the areas you want to keep and slowly erasing the bits you don't want to keep any longer in your uh, image. And once you've gone over the whole thing, darkening the areas up, you should have something that looks just like this here. Now, moving on to the second owl, I'm gonna try and add a bit more of a human element into it to give it more of sort of a storytelling effect. Um, using things like items like clothing or accessories, you can tell more of a story or what type of personality that, that creature has. Um, just like you would in the real world when you meet real people. Obviously, it's looking at their clothes style. You sort of get a feel of who that person is and what kind of character they have. So, for this as well, when we started off with a diamond shape, you can also start off with other shapes to build upon. So here, I'm going to fill this space in the middle and I have this space up here for the third character. So this time, I'm going to draw more of this shape just to fill in the space. Whereas this is more of a diamond, this is more of a square, if you will, but coming down here. Um, I don't know what shape you'd call that. But yeah, it's more, more like a bent out shape. Then as always, the center lines will come in place. Just like so. And like the same with the eye placements, I'm looking to place one in the middle here. And same on the other side, like so. And once I've got the two circles in place, I sculpt around things like the eyelids and stuff. And I want to do a bit of a different style on this one, so I'm going to do it so the eyes are sunken in. And to do this effect, I'm just going to do a C shape around, and it gives the illusion that that eye is now sunken in. If I shade, shade it a little bit, you see what I mean, a lot clearer. 
like that. To get the black pencil out now, so I can show you guys. Because I obviously owls have like those big wide eyes, that's definitely a key feature. But I want them wide but also sunken into the skull. So that's how you do that sort of sunken effect. And literally you want to do the same for this eye, but because it's facing the facing the viewer, instead of the C being so tight, it'd be a lot more looser as it comes up. Like this. Like a loose C. So tight C for the one further away from the audience loose C if it's closer to the audience and here just a few guidelines I'll use my black straight away so I can show you guys exactly what I mean and it's a lot more sunken in and you end up with something that looks just like this just gonna put some shading now as well to like accentuate that depth just like so. For around the eyes, I'm actually gonna just do a different pattern. So I'm gonna draw these rhombus-like shapes around each eye, so it's like a patch. But I'm looking to bring in each line to the middle here because that's where I'm gonna place the mouth, the beak. And for this one, I'm gonna do a much smaller beak for the owl. And maybe have his mouth open a little bit. And to do that, it's just a little square for the top and the bottom, I'm just doing another little square to make the bottom of the mouth up, like so. And now I'm just carrying the shape around, real loose, real rugged, almost like a Batman mask at this point. And then from here is where I'm going to look to build up my shapes. So here, I'm following the first initial shape we put in, that square shape. And same on this side, and then I'm bringing it across. And where I have this sort of effect, I sort of like, by playing around with that with the first initial design, when you move into the second one, it can give you greater ideas. <clears throat> and so I thought, why don't humanize it and just give it these sort of almost bunny ears, which don't, I don't solely exist in the owl, but I think just it's cool. And this is what's great to fill up your sketchbook and play around. I cannot stress, it's about play. Um, a lot of artists are like, oh, I'm grinding, especially with today's hustle culture. People can grind, grind, grind. Draw with, I've got to grind 10 hours a day. Why do you want that? <laughs> Life's too short, learn just to play. And to do that, you play around with the first one and you think, oh, okay, this is how the mind works. Oh, this is really cool. This is how my mind works, I tell you. Is I was like, okay, this is cool, but the beak, let, I didn't like the beak, I thought it was too big. And these were so cool, I thought, you could do anything with these hair. You could have a whole afro sort of style if you really were that complex. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm playing. And then if I was to do another owl, which I will do later on, I'm now gonna get closer to something I really feel like would work because I'm testing it out and playing with it, putting like a bit of theory behind it. So sometimes with art, I'm a bit rambling here. It's not just about drawing. You gotta play and then you arrive at a point where you, you take little lessons, pit them together, and then you come up with something no one's seen before. Um, so the main thing is just pick up your pencils, treat it like play and enjoy it. Like now with the markings, completely just, I want to add some shapes coming in towards the eyes and this is how I'm working. Just random little, little overly shapes coming in towards the eye. I might not keep him, I might not, but this guides you to the next area I'm working on, which is going to be here. And with the first initial shape, I'm sticking to the foundation, I'm sort of looking to bring this in. And the same with the other one. like so and it's sort of character like this where I don't know how it's going to turn out I actually enjoy enjoy the most because it's got just the most fun and here I might add a few more leaves here and for effect sometimes I draw little diamonds that aren't even attached to design so they're sort of coming off it sort of gives it a bit more movement And whenever I think of owls, I always imagine like it must be from high, um, it must be from Winnie the Pooh. I always imagine the sort of wise old owl, with the books. So for this one, I might actually play up on that. We give him a small body just to fit in this area. So putting in this other square-like shape just to fit in. And I'm gonna do him have him like wearing some human clothes, so I'm giving him like a cape. A 
cape here, and then let's give him like a chain on the front. Maybe like a, with like a pocket watch or something. And now the body's in a nice little place. I'm gonna pit the pit the arms, by the wings, should I say? <laughs> And like the same we did here, I'm just going to do that this line first. So like I said, one, two. And here I'm actually going to do a third line, so break into three parts. And then I'm just almost going to give the feathers a finger-like look. So he's more like got this sort of position. Let's have him leaning on something. Yeah, let's have him leaning on the edge here. So for this, I'm just doing these little tick shapes and put them back in to the initial design. And what you want to do is this, is break into parts. So it comes in three sections. So one section is this section, two is this section, three is the underneath section. It may sound a bit complicated at this point, but it will make sense if you draw on yourself, just go, okay, I see now, one, two, three. And when you break into parts, you're just making it a lot easier for yourself. And now this is in place, it shows me there's a bit of counterbalance here. So I'm gonna, change the shape a little bit and make him like a small fat owl <laughs> which is also cool it's, it's just it's going with it and whilst you're doing this at home you might come to the realization like you don't like how I did a certain thing which is absolutely fine and you might see a different route you want to take it and if you feel that way take it honestly go with your gut instinct because you know yourself better than anybody else and have trust in yourself and same with the face markings here you can do whatever face markings you want I'm gonna add that over here so I like these little diamond shapes similar to this but maybe smaller dots and hey I'm leaning on like a bookshelf or something it's got more context then and then he's got his hood on there he's got a cape on he's got a clock on his uh on his neck I have and for the clothing I'm just gonna have it like keep your pencil loose and draw a line, I'm going to have a zip here so the line's coming down and I'm just following that around, so it's fitting around the stomach there and the same for this side here and then you see his little belly here rough it up a little bit, give it a bit of texture for the fur and all that's left is putting the other arm what I'm looking for for the placement is here. I actually had a, quite a comment the other day as well from somebody who said, how do you just draw on a piece of paper and make it fit? Is if you are doing a load of characters, say if you wanted to do like a poster, once you fit the first character in, look for spaces. So right now, here's an amazing space. I can use this as almost a shape to put the wing in, like this. And then it fits. But that will come naturally. You start seeing the best place for shapes. And as that gets better, um, it just comes more instinctively how to do it. And the same again, break into three for the wing. So sh shape one coming towards the body, shape two coming towards the body, and then we build up on layers. So here you do these little C shapes for the inside of the wing, and then it's coming into like big blocks of the wing, so these little squares coming in, or rectangles should I say. And for the tips, it's long, pulled out, and slowly get sure as it's come towards the body and close together. Really cool looking design. And if you're a tattoo artist, or you, this would be a sick tattoo. I love these little owls for doing, um, if you do your tattoo work, it looks incredible. Um, definitely gonna look to be doing a few more in the future. For clothing, for shade work, I'm just gonna pick literally drag lines like this. I'm not even looking too much and what I'm planning to do is then when I put the lines in look at it to get the black pencil out and put the folds in now so where it was straight fold little C and bring in a little bit and then straight up same with underneath and then down because no clothing is just straight flat there's folds there's ripples but then you really want to take advantage of pieces of shading so then you want to put like, these curvature lines in and shade it in, like so. And then you would keep going through that until the whole clone piece is done. Um, Leg-wise, let's, I'm gonna do it where this has got like a long leg. I'm gonna do it so it's like stubby. 
like he's just got stubby legs and make it more like a hand. Um, to do this, do a rectangle shape with him getting a bit bigger towards the bottom. And actually I'll do the same here as well. He's going off the picture a little bit. And then for each toe, smaller rectangles. One, two, three. One, two, and you wouldn't see the first shape because it's curving in. And smaller rectangles again. So you see how I'm building it. Big rectangles, smaller rectangles, like so. And when I get the pencil, what I'll do is I'll follow the shape and add a few little curves in the gaps. And just keep building up. There really isn't no right or wrong way, I'm gonna lie to you. You just wanna keep playing with your imagery and get it to how you like it. And when you get to a place where you like your own artwork, other people will enjoy it. It's the same as when your personality. If you try and please others, you end up not actually <laughs> becoming friends with anyone and no one likes it. But when you learn to embrace your own self and how you develop things, naturally you create your own style and people will love it. So trust in yourself is the biggest thing. Um, bit of life lessons there from Sotep. But what you want to be doing now is grab your black pencil this is a polychroma faber castell i don't know if i said at the beginning and go over the whole lot and layer up in shades and a quick tip before i do that if you want to have a bit of shading um i'll use like a block shading so let's say from here i would put in a base shape because there's a curvature line around and shade down and i repeat this again and again and again throughout the image until i build up all my shades so like around here i will look to a block around and then shade from that and keep building until I've done so anyway grab your black pen line the whole image and you should end up with the same result as me if you followed correctly And once you've gone over the whole thing, you should end up with something that looks just like this here. Um, I really like this one actually, it's proper cool, almost like he's stumbling. Um, always like the expressive hand moving, so really, really happy with how that came out. For the third and final one for the day, I'm actually going to blend the two and pin them together and just create something, um, yeah, really unique. And obviously, as always, like the past two, we start with a base shape. So with the foundation here, I'm actually going to start with a square shape and I'm going to just see how it comes out myself just doing this. So with the foundation in place, you want to put the center line so you get a good indication of what way the face is facing. And like before, just put in circles for eyes, even though they're not going to stay that way and they well, now you can change them to however you want. For this, I might have an owl looking really sleepy, so the eye's gonna be shut. So I'm just putting the eyebrows in place, so I just these two lines, and then a smaller circle for underneath with some bags. And obviously with the circles that are in place, I can just stick that as the upper eyelid. And likewise with this eyelid here too. Just use that shape and bring it around. Now I've got the bottom half of the circle once again. So I'll bring it down a bit. I'm going to round that off. And then do a few bags underneath. On each eye. Now for the beak, just want to do a small rectangle. Like that. And theoretically, you could just leave it like that if you just want to do a beak. I'm going to give it a bit of shape. So I'm just doing this little triangle shape coming off and connect to the top. And the same on this side here, and then I'm squaring it off. The thing you want to realize is the beak is curved, so there's going to be a curvature line here. And now I'm shading downwards, and that shade indicates that it's got a fold in the nose. For this bird here, I'm actually going to do it so the mouth is open, so the bottom I'm going to really bring down long and do this same shape we did here replicated at the bottom of the mouth so just small triangle and bring it all the way up and also you're going to see the inside of the mouth so you want to do a closing line come behind 
and then a bit of darker level of shade, we can do this here with a pencil, in the mouth, like so. And as always, like a lot of my drawings, I'm just going to throw in like a loose cigarette. I don't smoke by the way guys, I don't, uh, I don't even think smoking's cool, but I just think in drawing, it, the whole reason I put cigarettes in, because I had someone ask me recently, um, is for this factor, in a lot of my drawings, is you then got the element of smoke. And that to me, when it comes over, here I'll show you what I mean. You put a cigarette in, then there you've got loose lines of smoke. So when I finish this now, I'll just a little quickly show you now, you use the smoke behind it, it gives a really cool effect, and that's why I use, um, yeah, put cigarettes in my mouth, but don't smoke, I don't smoke. Smoke it is, smokers are jokers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. Here I'm actually gonna do, do like, random shapes around the eyes and try yourself try for a few random shapes around the eyes um, to see which one you like most I suppose and once I've done that now I can use this line here from the initial square and curve it here like a backward C and bring it in underneath the mouth and you want to be doing the same on this side here. And because we're going for a square shape, I'm building on the first foundational lines. You see that, how it comes out, but I'm always returning back to the foundation. And that's this how a lot of animators actually create a lot of their character studies. And if you are into animation, you know this already, you know, if someone's going to be aggressive, there's key features you pick to make that character look more aggressive, like more blocked off jaws compared to a woman's face, which has a lot more rounded shapes. So, really get used to just playing with shapes and building up on shapes to create what you want to create. This owl, I'm gonna give it those, the different type of ears. So here it's almost like cat ears, I suppose. These little bent triangle shapes. And down the centre is where I'm going to do the markings. I've got markings here, markings here, but this time I want to change up the marking patterns and have them in the centre. And the funny thing is, I'm not actually sure if these ears, like this design of ears, is anatomically correct for an owl. Um, but sometimes with drawings, you can bend shapes, and if you are going for more of an illustrated style, you can add random shapes to something, while still being able to tell what it is. So here, yeah, I'm pretty sure that there are some owls that have these kind of ears. But that's just for, for my imagination. And here I'm just putting a few more different shapes around the eye shape we put in, like the mask. Like so. And now I'm going to give it some clothes as well. I'm going to get a scarf in to do something like clothes. A scarf is just an easy thing to do. Draw a small block. And from the block, this is size facing the audience, so you see a line and then just wrap it around the neck with these two lines. And when you get to the end, instead of just drawing a flat line, do it so it comes out and in, out and in, and exactly the same the side. Out, then in, out, then in. And then like I said earlier, but if you want to do a sheet of characters or different, um, here now, guideline, there's here's the space. So here I'm just going to throw a line, like a spine line, like so. Now that tells me that the body can follow that by doing a similar shape. And already when I put this line in, I want to have the wing sort of just down. He's relaxed. And this wing here is the main one doing all the talking. Bam. Okay. Once the body is in place, I'm probably gonna actually change this wing and bring it coming inwards. No, keep it that way, keep it going to the back. Now that's in place, I get a rough guide and I'm building up on it. Um, things like the tail, I'm also gonna do just coming straight down and around and coming back up to the center. 
And a cool thing with illustration is you can take it wherever you want to take it. So what's on top of my mind is that I'm just doing normal feet. I know one of these tutorials that everyone loves on my channel is throwing one of the skulls we learned from my other videos. <laughs> so here, thread a cross line in. And we're gonna have him always perched on on the skull. I won't put too much detail in the skull right now. If you want to see the skull tutorial, it is on my channel. Um, yeah. But this is now combining two lessons we learned into one um, to create something way more unique than just a single owl. Bang right there. Bring all the teeth in. Like so. I'm literally just speeding through this as quick as I can because I want to stick to the owl. And I can just fix that up later. So here's the tail and with the tail, I'm going to do this fan shape and just bring lines coming back into the, into the bird. Chest, I want to have like some fur, so I'll just do real loose ragged lines. Like so. And like I said, with the smoke now, have it come in behind the owl and sort of wisping off into the wind. With this wing, I'm actually going to do it so it's folded, like so it has more of a human element to it. So for this, you want to make sure you go halfway, then cut the line off, and then you're drawing lines coming back over. So here's the first one. The second one, you might want to actually keep straight, which I'm going to do. And then this one, I'll keep this come back in again. And you can have them doing anything here. So here's just for example, let's just have them holding, I don't know, just some sort of tube. Let's make it, let's make it a maxi can of spray paint. Just because for now. And there you go. See, now it's holding something. It's got a cool human element. In the inside of the arm, you just want to add those little C shapes. Keep building that like scales. And there you go. And for this one, top half, I'm going to block it off so it comes around. So shape one, break into shape two. Maybe have a few more markings on the arm, just some patches, and like before, coming down and then back towards the body. And just keep going with that until you get to the final lines. Just like so. And once you are happy with the final design, you know what time it is. You want to grab the black pencil and then now you really want to go in and start picking up all the details and layering in the shades. And if you were to colour it, colour it, shade, put the shade lines down first, this gives you an easier guide to where to put the colour in place. So yeah, I'm going to waste no more time, I'm just going to start lining it and um, yeah, we can see what the final result becomes. And there we have it, everybody, how you at home can draw a very cool stylized looking owl. Um, I actually really enjoyed bringing you guys this video today and I really hope you enjoyed it. And I need to say a massive thank you to the sponsor, mentorme.art. Like I said, there is a link in the description, so go and check that out if you want to further and progress in your artistic abilities. And as always on this channel, I have to say a massive thank you to the new Patreons who have joined. And my God, is the Patreon blowing up. I want to say a thank you to Damien Finnegan, Tattoo Squad, Chris, Aaron, Zick Safi, June Diaz, Brody, Bran, Asher, Jack McCree, and Shannon Biondi. Thank you guys so much for joining the team, and I hope you enjoyed the exclusive content. 
Um, if you have any questions or any further information, don't be afraid to hit me up in the comments. Um, and as always on the channel, create, stay well, one love and peace.